Intersectionality is the reality that each one of us have multiple different characteristics that define who we are as a person. That there are many different parts of us that combine and magnify themselves to showcase our experiences in the world. Now, someone who is black also can be gay. And that intersection of two different marginalized groups in society impact each other in different ways. And really, the important thing about intersectionality is realizing that we need to look at those focal points, look at those ways that different things that define us intersect to be able to effectively provide programs and support for. Traditionally, you know, with intersectionality, we think about different forms of marginalization, different types of identities, race, gender, sexuality. It's important for us to think more strategically about how we incorporate more nuanced uh, identities as, as well. Particularly right now, you know, drug use and, and drug user health needs to be kind of top line uh, for how we approach people because that is one more added level, one more layer um, of identity and complexity that people will present with, that will encounter, and we need to be strategic about the ways that we create services that are tailored towards meeting those, those multiple different identities. It's important, you know, that we not only say that, you know, health disparities exist, but we provide some context as to why those disparities exist. What are some of those factors, whether they be systemic or institutional, that perpetuates, you know, those disparities? And how can we work toward addressing or deconstructing those institutions in such a way that we can alleviate those disparities and make sure that everyone has uh, equitable access to care? We need to recognize where the gaps exist where we see programs are not reaching communities that are specifically within an intersectional point. I am like a perfect definition of intersectionality. I'm a mom, I'm a grandmother, I'm a lesbian, I'm a New Orleanian. And my own life experiences help me to see other people. At Women with a Vision, you know, the whole idea of intersectionality is grappling with the identities that are oppressed in society and the systems that oppress them. Most clinics treat everybody the same when they come in, and they think that's the right way. It's not the way we do it at Women with a Vision. I've had clients come in and say, you know, I went over to this clinic or that clinic and I absolutely didn't feel wanted. If all you can see me is a body, a count, a number, we're not going to fix what's happening in health departments across this country. You have to see the whole person, and seeing the whole person means you have to see the conditions in which they live. We really need to, to think about the, the complexity of how people are presenting to us, not necessarily the complexity of what we can present to them. Um, often you hear, and we label, people face multiple uh, different intersecting identities as being hard to reach. I think the real takeaway is that often it's our services that are hard to reach. It's us who, who needs to, to be more proactive, thinking about how to approach communities holistically, thinking about how to approach people holistically, because every person is a different representation, every person holds different identities, um, and we're not going to create effective services until we figure out how to work with those. We know now that biomedical interventions by themselves aren't the only way that we're going to end the epidemic. But people haven't necessarily taken the right steps in addressing uh, the sort of intersectional way in which stigma manifests in a lot of um, HIV patients. It's important to consider an intersectional lens when we're talking about creating effective programming, um, mostly because it's important for us to consider the compounding stigma that exists when a person has an intersectional identity, which happens very often. A person's identity is a very complex social construct, um, which evolves over time. And if we don't create programs to address each of the unique challenges that those people have, then we're never really going to be able to end the epidemic. In order to develop effective programs, you have to be uh, cognizant and aware of intersectionality. Because if you're not, then you are developing programs that are incomplete and don't necessarily address the multitude of factors um, uh, that uh, impact an individual as it relates to uh, the program. The health department is tasked with overall public health. They're tasked with 
making sure that our communities are whole and healthy and have the information they need. So the health department should also lead when we're talking about shame and stigma. How powerful would it be to have public health leaders across this country really come out with hard campaigns around shame and stigma?